Well, here we are at the beautiful Woodsboro Reservoir, just on the outskirts of Barnsley. And I can't think of a better time than to give you five of my top tips when it comes to long range method feeder work on any kind of water, whether you're targeting big bream or carp, it's very relative to both species because of the discipline when it comes to long range method work. So tip number one, without a shadow of a doubt, it's the first and foremost bait preparation. At the end of the day, regardless of what tackle you've got, fishing, regardless of the terrain or the technique, preparation is so important because feed and presentation is everything. You want to make your hook bait as presentable, as natural looking as possible. So preparing your pellets, especially for this style of fishing, long range method work is imperative. Always do your pellets the night before. And I'm a massive believer in using two of these main products as my two go-to pellets, where if I'm allowed, uh, which are the Amino Original two and three mil and the betaine green three mil as well. Mix them equally. Fish just love them. They're a koi pellet and they're rich, really rich in fish meal. And especially during the spring, summer and autumn months, that's so important when the fish are going on scent as well as sight. Of course, when you're preparing them, a small addition of my favorite uh, hydration liquid, liquid complex tea with betaine green pellet soap. These two combined, again, with a little bit of water to top up to get that level of the water to your pellets is so important, but do them the night before, then you end up with quality pellets throughout the whole of your pleasure session or your match. If you do them in the morning, your pellets don't seem to actually get working right till later on the day. So do them in the, mo uh, the night before, you end up with a consistent pellet, uniform pellet, that works correctly from the morning right till the afternoon. So give it a go next time you're out. So tip number two, of course, get your bait preparation right. The next step is loading the feeder correctly. This is so important. Let's break this down. We're on open water reservoir. We may be chucking a long way. You've got all those elements to contend with. Strong winds, undertow, and of course the aggression of that feeder hitting that surface at 60, 70, 80, even further than 80 meters. You've got to compensate for that so you've got to use the right feeder my go-to feeder for this style of fishing is a hybrid feeder simply because the walls around that feeder really do protect that bait and create that principle what i'm trying to achieve that when that feeder's on the bottom i'm creating a focal point a reason for the fish to home in on that feeder and therefore they're going to find your hook bait a whole lot quicker if there's no bait around your feeder why would they want to come to your hook bait so that's really important and of course you are then, as a result of that, building up your peg. Progressive feeding. It's not where you're casting on a regular basis. You might only have 10, 15 casts in the day, but you want to try and be accurate and build up a focal point, a swim, an area where your bait is building up. Therefore, you're going to get bites a whole lot quicker. To load your feeder up cor correctly, it's really important. First of all, get your pellets right. Do them the night before. Then they're soft and spongy. So the principle what I want to achieve is when I'm loading that feeder up, my hook bait is it being pushed away from a main body of feed in the feeder. So therefore my hook bait is one of the loose particles around the feeder, what the fish seem to come into your peg and there's a greater chance of you actually hooking them. Always create a base. So load your feeder up and create what I'd call a fat, flat table. That enables the hook bait to roll off the feeder quite quickly. Put your hook bait on once you've created that flat table and then load a like a a carpet bait, a lid over the top of your pellet, but do not press down on that feeder. Press around your hook bait rather than down. If you press down, there's a, a good chance that you're actually pushing the hook bait into that base, into that flat bed, into the flat table. I don't want that to happen. So always press around your hook bait and create a nice little mound and mold it nice and tight. And always make sure it's uniformed and aerodynamic that'll aid you casting and make fishing at range a whole lot easier. Balance your tackle. Do not go undergunned when it comes to this style of fishing. We're on a really open venue as most venues are, B 
big expanse of water, open to the elements, the weather, the conditions can change, the wind can pick up, make your fishing easy. Even if you're fishing maybe 50, 60 metres on these kind of places, arm yourself, gun yourself up with the right armoury. So today I'm using a 13 foot with uh, Aero Pro 13 foot with the Ultegra XTC 5500. Nice big rod that enables me to fish the distance that I'm achieving. Let's say for example today 78 metres, but if the wind picks up or the fish back away, that enables me exactly with, a, with the same setup to venture further out. But actually it makes my fishing easier. That means I can be accurate, I can be consistent, and I can be efficient. That is the most important factor. And of course, a nice big reel enables you to hit that clip a whole lot easier. Don't struggle to hit that clip, make hitting that clip easy. And of course, it's more enjoyable. If you're fishing neater, fishing efficiently, you're enjoying your fishing a whole lot more. So be prepared and take the right tackle and balance yourself up with the right tackle with the rod and the reel, including the main line as well. So I've got uh, an 019 main line to a 10 pound shocker. That shock is really gonna help me give that rod some oomph, compress the rod when it comes to reaching those targets. Using a shot leader gives you that confidence knowing nothing's gonna let you down. Watercraft is the most important factor. People are faced with a big open reservoir don't fish to your limit. Fish to your comfortable distance on that day. I could be on one day, be able to fish 90, 100 metres, and the following day, because of the wind, the wind could change direction, it could be in my face. I might be struggling to fish 60, 70 metres. So make your fishing easy. If you're making your fishing easy, it means you're more accurate and you're more efficient. But also, as what happens with a lot of these venues, these open water reservoirs, they're not, they're not as coloured as your normal commercials. Therefore, the fish are very spooky. They'll initially come to a bed of bait once you're being accurate, but then they'll back away. By having uh, that distance beyond where you're fishing, by not fishing too far out, it enables you to venture bit by bit further out and carry on catching. So it's really important to not fish to your limit at the start. Gradually work your way. And also, by doing it that way, you become more efficient with your casting. And then when you do become, uh, you do feel as if you need to go that little bit further out, it makes fishing that further, that little bit further out later on in the day easier because you've got into that rhythm of casting and hitting your clip correctly. So it's really important to venture your way out rather than go to your furthest distance. Practice your casting. This is so important. We talked about the bait preparation, using the right feeders, utilizing your swim management, loading the feeder up correctly, but without the correct cast, a lot of that information is irrelevant. What I want to achieve is I want to hit my clip in the air to ensure that that feeder lands nice and neat on the surface. At the end of the day, that feeder needs to be hitting the water that way up. Therefore, all the bait within that feeder is protected. So in my head, when I'm sat there for 15, 20, 25, even longer, each cast, I know in my head that I've got bait in that feeder, a reason for those fish to home in on the hook bait. So casting is so important. The key to casting is actually using your left hand as leverage. I'm right-handed. So as I go to cast out, I'm actually pulling back with this left hand. That is where the power comes from because then you're generating all the power in the rod from the base of the blank. That's the most powerful part of the rod. It's less prone to twisting, therefore it enables you to fish further out, but be more accurate because the carbon isn't twisting. Therefore, it's giving that rod that accuracy. But also it means when you're fishing at range, it makes it a whole lot easier because you're pulling down and creating a massive amount of leverage, which enables you to compress the blank a whole lot easier. Don't push forward with your right hand, pull back with your left hand and use this hand here more like a pendulum so it's a hinge system, but all the power for a cast is generated in your left hand. If you go out practicing that, it'll make your casting at range a whole lot easier and also extremely accurate at the same time. <laughs>